Okay. Oh, I have six participants. Continue. Okay. I see participants now. Okay. So pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by following the instructions on the Board of Health's posted agenda. It'll be done via Zoom online or the posted telephone number. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Board of Health website an audio or video recording, and ours will be audio, transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting, including our minutes. I will now open the Board of Health meeting with a roll call. So I am Nancy Gilbert, Chair. Steve? Present. Tim? Present. And Maureen? Present. Okay, so the meeting opens. And our first action on the agenda is to review the minute from June 10th. And um, I looked at them. I had one question, Steve. Did anyone else have any questions? Under um, the director's report, and Emma, you might correct this, and I might be wrong, over 90% of Amherst adults in age groups other than college age group have been vaccinated. I thought that was in the over 65 population. Basically, could be. I'm not sure. Let's get it right. Yeah. Do you recall, Emma? I don't think 90% of all of our residents adults, I think it was 90% of our over 65 population. Yeah. You realize it says 90% it says other than the college age groups, you know. That's yeah. What yeah. But I think it was 65 and over. Oh, okay. Correct. But we're okay. over 50% for the, the 12 to 16 as well. 12 to 15. Right, because <laughs> above it's 43% of yeah. one. That, that, yeah, that's including the college students, yeah. Right. So, so what you... What should it say? It says 90% of adults over 65 years of age. That, that would be correct. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, otherwise, everything else, perfect, Steve. Anybody else have any comments? Can I have a motion to accept the minutes as written with the minor change. I'll move to accept the minutes. Someone second? I can second it. Okay, Tim. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Tim? Aye. Maureen? Aye. Steve? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Okay, so we have that done. Now, our next agenda item under all businesses, update from health inspectors, outdoor dining, farmers market inspections, et cetera. Yeah, so um, I did invite Susan and Ed. Uh, they didn't have anything new to add right now um, in terms of health inspections. And then later in the meeting under new business, we do have that PVTC. Um, inspection outcomes. So I'll, I'll speak to that when we get to new business. Okay. Um, Anything happening on the um, main street where the two restaurants have been closed? It came up at the last business meeting that there was inquiries about opening restaurants there. Is there any more action? Yep. So um, I had a meeting uh, with Rob Mora and uh, David Zomek. Um, we are going to give the opportunities um, for if there is continued, if they can meet the expectations of the continued pest management, the um, water, um, dealing with the water infiltration, uh, if that's even present anymore. Um, but looking 
at that again with possible new building management and um, tenants uh, to see if the properties can be used. There was concern from the prior director the the restaurant closest to the town hall that basement I, I have not been in it but we were told was dirt and there were a lot of concerns about that half of the building um ever being able to be compliant i don't know how accurate that is but if you could check on that do any of you yeah. yep. So, yep so i have the comprehensive files for okay. when this has gone back and have done a big review of that. Um, so I think the feeling is that we wanna give the opportunity if they wanna make upgrades and make it meet compliance for it to be possibly utilized for food establishments. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly right now it's not in a condition where it can be, but we definitely wanted to support local businesses, um, tenants, getting into those spaces and, and really revitalizing um, Main Street and those properties again. Yeah, that whole string is empty. Thank you. And whoever the, the, the contractor who was involved before, he really worked hard to keep those buildings. So um, he, he I recall, worked very hard um, yeah. in improving the structures there. Okay, anything else? Any questions from board members? Second is Board of Health member appointments. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we, we continue to search for a new member. Um, I know that there are people attending and listening in. Um, we certainly are looking for someone to join the Board of Health uh, and improve, and not improve, but increase um, our diversity on the board and representation of the Amherst community as a whole. So um, we continue to reach out to um, key community individuals to try and recruit someone um, on the board. I know Nancy, you were doing a lot of direct outreach on Juneteenth. Um, and really any time that we've been out in the community. Um, so here we are. There's a hint to anyone who's here and listening, please <laughs> fill out the, what's the title of that form you get on the website? I had it on it. I, I think it's a community okay. action form. That's right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, third item is listening sessions. And we held two listening sessions. Um, on June 22nd and 23rd. One was for community members where eight members attended and the second was for town employees. Um, I, be, I have all the transcripts. So Steve took notes at one. I took notes that time and uh, Anita Sorrow did. At the second one, Nancy Schroeder, Anita, and myself took notes. I have all of those notes I've been looking at. I've done two, uh, one in-person and one, one phone interview, and there are four people who we have to follow up on on phone interviews. Um, I've written the introduction because we are seeing themes. Um, Emma, I, I do want to give you feedback on things that were done very positively, and they, those messages came out very clear. People were very happy with the clinics. Uh, younger people were very happy with how you opened vaccine clinics um, at the high school, middle school, and in town once the um, younger population became open for the Pfizer vaccine. Um, there was a lot of regard, um, especially from the town um, listening session for how um, Nancy Schroeder and Jen Brown kept everything going very smoothly, were very open, kept communication open until you were hired and in place. Um, so I wanted to make sure you heard those messages. Um, Yes, we didn't do everything perfectly. Um, and um, 
that comes out, but there's always room for improvement and um, their ideas of how to move forward. And hopefully by the end of um, July, I'll have the report written so you have it before the next Board of Health meeting. And thank you to everybody who participated and my two board members who helped um, on those days. Are there any questions? Okay. So now we are moving over to new business. And was Lauren going to come on at Lauren, Lauren's in the room now as oh, okay. Ben Harrington. Um, I, yes. I, I let them know that we were moving a little soon. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, there I see those now. Yeah. So our first point is racism as a public health crisis that Lauren Mills um, is going to address. I also sent a letter to the town council in June um, giving information uh, about racism as a public health issue with supporting uh, pieces from the American Public Health Association and the CDC. So Lauren, are you, uh, yes. are you gonna let her in? Okay, Lauren. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 Can you hear me and see me? Yes. Okay. I can't see myself yet. I can't um, see you yet either. Yeah, we, we, presentation. Can't, we can't see you, but. Oh, okay. But we have your slides. Yes. And I wanted to, um, I just want to have some, um, some kind of visual uh, print to go along with my conversation. Um, and these are from the webinar series that was shared by Dragon um, from the National Public, um, the National um, Public Health Association. The webinar, um, it was entitled, sorry, I'm entitled Advancing Racial Equity Series, um, the Ultimate Underlying Racism, the ulti Ultimate Underlying Condition. And so I, always always feel like I'm not quite uh, I don't quite know how the conversation will will go but I really appreciate you guys giving me the um, time to share some of my thoughts about you know why um, racism systemic racism should be declared a public health crisis and then what action steps we as a community can take with all the um, different entities that the community involves, um, individuals, the town um, management, town council, um, schools, businesses, um, health institutions, um, and colleges, universities, et cetera. So I, um, again, these slides are not mine. They're just from the, the webinar and I wanted to, um, make sure that I said the name of the, the doctor who was the main person who presented, but she wasn't the only one. Kamara Phyllis um, Jones, MD, MP, PhD. She was the president of American Public Health Association. Uh, she, I think she's currently at the School of Public Health at Emory University. And she is here for that um, associate that's from health medicine. Now, are there um, people? I'm having I trouble am, hearing Lauren. I, I'm other people? interested in public health. I'm interested in the issues of um, racial equity because uh, I think I think after being a just a human being, I'm a mother, and are other people having trouble hearing Lauren? Yeah, yes, it seems to break up a little bit or reverberate. Yeah. Are you still there, Lauren? No, I think we lost her. Okay, I hope she rejoins. Okay. 
Uh, uh, Emma, what do we do now? Well, okay. hold on. Here's Ben. Ben is back. Take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah. I will say uh, um, Kamara Jones is a phenomenal leader in person. I have met her numerous times at the American Public Health Association meetings. And whenever she speaks, you kind of sit and listen and think, oh my goodness, um, she's an absolutely amazing uh, leader in public health. So I just, Ben and Lauren, I had them re-enter the room. Um, Lauren, I think we lost you a little bit there, um, maybe with your service, but um, Nancy was just speaking about how she's met Kamara Jones and how wonderful of a person she is and knowledgeable. Yes, I, yeah, I was very impressed. So I'll try to talk fast and I'll see if I'll have to use this, the slides. Um, Just so let me I, know if you want me to advance them. Okay. Um, so I, I, I consider myself, I was saying um, a mother and one of um, Kamara's, one of her points was that in American society, we don't ask a lot when we greet each other. Um, in other, in other, you know, traditions, they ask, you know, how are the children? And um, I, that was one of the notes that I took down. That you know, we have to think to the generations, not just ourselves, but and not just our children, but our children's children and so forth, if we really want to solve um, the problems that we continually are, are, are going through as far as how racism is impacting all parts of you know, our health and our society. So I call this, um, I, I don't know, I just call this presentation, whatever, you know, conversation, death by a thousand traumatic stories relived and retold um, and the, I call it that because I think sometimes we continue to tell the same story and we don't get to the solutions, even though it's important for us to, as um, the, pre the webinar series um, mentioned that, to know the history and to know how things are and why they are and try to answer the why, but we have to, not just keep telling the same story over and over again. We have to get to the why and then get to the solutions. Um, and so the key parts of the society that, I'm sorry, uh, key parts of society that declaring racism as a public health crisis should address, um, in my opinion, is the one, the digital divide, um, two, access to health services, three, public education and anti-racism curriculum, uh, uh, a review group that um, reviews books that are used to um, that are used to introduce um, multicultural um, topics and events and that are historical or, or present. Um, for community police oversight, five alternative safety networks to uh, to standard policing. Um, I think I'm on six, creating um, black spaces and entrepreneurship and seven, healing and support for relationships from toxic stress due to um, direct or perceived racism. Um, also uh, some other points that I took from the webinar is how do we come out of this bad situation that we're in? How can uh, communities protect themselves from the threats of racism um, and one of my solutions, I guess, or one of my thoughts of a solution is having good self-esteem um, and, and self-worth, um, having knowledge of ourselves and our historical truths, promoting self-care. Uh, we know as we age, this requires more diligence and uh, we need to stop normalizing and seeing Black experiences as 
all hazards. We have to change um, these perceptions at an early age so that those um, negative labels do not become our realities. Uh, we need to practice gratitude for what we have and take care of those in our lives to the best of our ability. And we need to seek um, new ways and people to support our vision of health free from racism, trauma, and drama. Um, and I did take some other notes, but um, I, don't, I guess we could go through the, the slide. I don't know if you wanted to like have comments or have a conversation or just like me um, just kind of give my initial thoughts. But um, as, as um, the presenter Kamara um, in the webinar, um, Dr. Kamara, she said that um, declaring racism is just a stake in the ground, but it's not the end all be all. There has to be some action steps. And I um, did want to share, I guess, some of the barriers that she, you know, had on the slide. So I guess we can go through those if, if people want to, but um, you can you can let me know what what you would like to do. I'm very interested in action steps and what you think is important for action steps. And then if you would tell the board what you think is important for us to do. I wanna hear your story, your voice in leading this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, other, other board members, what do you think? I think that's really important. I also wonder how um, what's uh, presented to us as a public health crisis is also part of the greater town actions or uh, statements and actions in the area of racism by the town council and by uh, the committee for reparations and how we fit together because it really seems like one one broad topic to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, well, I, I, I came because the declaration and however the declarations are put together um, by like the town council, if they have to be put forward by an organization or I don't know if they they can be put forward by individuals, but um, because the declaration would have public health um, in it, and we have the we have board of of uh, um, uh, we, uh, Lauren, you're I want, wait, not, Lauren, you're uh, coming um, in and out. I'm not hearing the Human Lauren, Rights Commission and um, wait, Lauren, can you uh, Lauren, can you, Lauren, can you hold up one minute? Down, um, with Lauren, your your voice is coming in and out for me, and I'm missing words. So, I, and I don't want to miss them. Um, so, are other people having trouble hearing right now? Yes. Yeah, I want to make sure we don't miss your words, Lauren. And and your are you back? Are you still there? I think we lost her again, and I I don't want to lose her words. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to interrupt her, but I wasn't hearing the 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 message yeah let's see i bet she's gonna come back in the room um listed in, she's listed in the attendees okay oh, there um, is. while we wait for her to come back um i think she's talking I'm here oh okay great thank you i didn't didn't want to you you faded out yeah. i don't i can just words. end it here that I yeah Okay. I um, I don't want I I hear what you're saying that you want to hear my thoughts and hear, you know what I feel the solutions would be. But I, like all of us, we are connected to other groups and other parts of the community. So I think it is a collective. Um, it's a collective and a collaborative, you know, way of doing 
doing this and you know solving this or making things better um, for those who who live and experience um, racism. I just wanted to also say that. Are you still there, Lauren? I love your quote that's up. I think we lost her. I know Ben, I know Ben Harrington is here. Um, and I didn't know if, if he had anything to add maybe while Lauren's having some technical difficulties, if we wanted to open that up. Okay, should we listen to Ben while we wait for Lauren to come back in? Ben, are you there? Yes, I am, I'm here. Okay. And how is your connection? I think it's good if I stay in the same spot, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so. You sound good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the Human Rights Commission. I'm the chair of Amherst Human Rights Commission. And so uh, we, we, we've definitely, we've discussed this. We had Lauren come and, and talk to us as well. We also sat down with, with uh, the dragon is, is it okay to refer to you as the dragon yeah that's fine i am so impressed with that name but um but yeah so so we, we're sort of interested not sort of we were interested in in partnering with the board of health in in, in this sort of declaration and, and um and i think like the way the way i think i i consistently think of in terms of actionable items and, and so like for me it if we're, we're making the declaration of uh, racism as a, as a public health crisis, right? I think it's probably important to incorporate the, the things that are going on as well and, and saying, you know, that we support these, you know, you know for instance, you know, reparations, you, you, one of the, the uh, suggestions is this uh, pathway to home ownership, right? Which, which also affects health and generational wealth and these sorts of things. So I, I think incorporating the things that exist already the, you know these, these initiatives that exist already is, is very important and i also think it's probably important i i, I think from from your end you know as, as the the board of health is you know, to, to kind of find other ways that that we could probably be effective or at least like kind of a initiate effectiveness if, if you will like kind of bringing up other you know like access to, to health care these sorts of things and and you know kind of playing a role there so that's sort of my hodgepodge spiel or <laughs> for now. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in what sorts of things you all, like this, we, we discuss, discuss this a lot at the Human Rights Commission, like what can we actually do to be effective? And, and, and one of our steps was to, you know, this idea of partnering with, with you all. And I'm, I'm just kind of wondering if any of you all have thought through you know, like initiatives that might be, that, that people haven't talked about already that might be helpful. Nancy, I know you've done a lot of research as have I, but um, with the American Public Health Association and their um, implementations, as well as the AMA, do you want to speak to that? So one thing, when people are talking about this declaration, last year, the American Public Health Association have a site where cities and towns can um, state that they have declared racism as a public health issue. Last June, Holyoke, Chicopee, and Springfield, all June 16th, 16th, and 17th, and Longmeadow on July 24th, their powers to be, so we would have to have our um, town council declare that racism is a public health issue in our town. Um, so that's this declaration that people are talking mm -hmm. about. Um, I've been talking and I, I, I'm hoping we're coming to a tipping point where we can 
do something. We've been talking about it. The public health section, the nur public health nursing section of the American Public Health Association, since the fall of 2012, every fall has a pre-conference session on racism. And I keep saying, we talk about it, we need an action plan. We need to move forward beyond talking. Um, in our town, uh, okay, so I have a million notes here, but how little progress has been made in our long history of anti-racism campaigns. And just on July 4th in um, the South Amherst Common, I attended it, the Frederick Douglass speech on what does the 4th of July mean to a slave? He announced racism way back in 1852. W.E. Du Bois, who our library at UMass is named after, in 1896, in his uh, report on the Philadelphia Re Negro, asked for health equity. In 1985, then we have Martin Luther King and all the movements and the Black Panthers from 1965 through the 70s. And in 1985, there was a the Heckler Report on health inequities. COVID has disproportionately sickened and killed in mar our marginalized communities. And as Lauren pointed out, three times uh, uh, African-Americans, Blacks and Latinos are three times more likely to suffer serious consequences or death in the COVID. So, and in our town, we have, um, and the town council is addressing it, um, the, the working group, the community safety working group, but, but we're not fully funding it. And we're not really acting on what this working group and they're telling the working group after August, goodbye. Don't don't work. We're going to put it in other places. So I think it's important that the community working safety group keeps working, and that we start funding what they asked for. And um, uh, in in my letter to the town council, I I said also public. Uh, High school graduation has been declared by the American Public Health Association as a public health issue. And to fund a teen uh, program for uh, uh, Blacks and Latinos is important because I'm sure it will help our uh, disparities in our education. And we all, as Ben mentioned, it goes back to the social determinants of health and what is our town doing? We do need collaboration, we do need cooperation, and I hope we have a tipping point where we can move forward. And I don't know if any of that has just made any sense and I feel like I'm, I'm preaching rather than being an open member, but I, I, that's it. <laughs> I could go on and on. Well, for the record, it made perfect sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because because that that's so. One thing I think Amherst does very well is to talk about things, right? One thing Amherst does not do well is walk the the talk, essentially, right? And and I think I think we kind of are getting to that tipping point, and, I, and I'm I'm with you. I I hope that we are, and and I also feel like we kind of we here you know speaking right now have the ability to kind of force that tipping point a little bit right and and uh so so i guess I, I guess i kind of wonder how do we get the town council to not only declare racism as a, a public health crisis but to also get them to commit to to putting their money where their mouth is putting our money i should say we, we all pay, pay taxes here right so mm -hmm. putting our money where their mouth is i guess what ideas do you have, Ben? I mean, I think like the just directly kind of, uh, I, I guess sort of having like a soft declaration, right? Kind of like forcing the issue, kind of coming up with the languaging, that that sort of thing. So it makes it that much easier. Cause I, I, I find like, so in my day job, I, I find that like, if I come up with the solution presented and then ask someone to partner with me, I get a lot more cooperation. And I also think that if we were to do that publicly, these are public officials, and I mean, as, as somebody who is also a public official, I can, I can say like, 
there are elections coming up, right? So now is a is, is kind of a, a, a very good strategic point to, to kind of press that issue publicly, you know? And and I, I would hope that becomes like sort of a campaign issue for folks as well. It does appear that there's someone in the attendee room, Anita Sorrow, that has her hand raised. Do we want to open for public comment? Yeah. See? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And then it looks like Lauren as well has, everyone's being so polite with their hands raised. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to do Anita and then back to Lauren um, because Lauren missed a lot of what she had to say. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll be very quick. Can people hear me? Yes. Okay. My name is Anita Saro. Um, I'm a resident of Amherst. And I just wanted to put a plug in for um, some work that was done in connection with the reparations report that I believe now is still available on um, the, the town's website. Um, Jeff Fishman and I worked on the section um, that was on health disparities. And the information in there is sobering um, and underscores everything that Lauren was starting to present about the disparities. For instance, and I'll just put a couple to, the, regardless of income and education level, uh, an African-American mother has twice the chance of dying um, perinatally than a white woman. A, a black baby has twice the chance of dying um, than a white baby. These are real and they filter down nationally, statewide, regionally, and right into Amherst. Um, I, I would suggest that when you think through this, you use the social determinants of health as a framework because it shows how income, transportation, education, housing, access to medical um, uh, and preventative care, and particularly what was profoundly moving for me, community engagement and safety was an essential part of someone's physical and emotional well-being. So the, the work of the community safety working group is absolutely essential. Now, what, what can a board of, of health do? I think you can be the voice. You can constantly be the voice of why this is important, why the health and safety and welfare of everybody in the community is important and help to break down the silos. Ben was talking about partnering with human rights. You're looking at, we're all have an eye on the town council. It's important to bring those pieces together so that the town really will walk the talk. And you know, when I look at the mission statement for, for the health department, I think the question always has to be our outreach. How are we doing it? What groups are we reaching? What groups are we not reaching and why? The same thing for education and for, for um, especially COVID, which has un underscored all of the concerns that we have. So I would just urge you to take the first step and do a declaration, but push well beyond that and make it part of your, an, an, an essential part of your mission to be able to say, we're here to deliver care, you know, to, to benefit everyone in the community. Where are we doing that well? What segments of the community are we doing that well and why? Where are we falling short and why? So that's my spiel, but please, you know, we put a lot of work into that report. I'd love to know that it's not just gathering dust. Anita, I've read the report and it's sitting on my desk at home um, with highlights in it. 
So. Great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's a seems like a good place to start. Um, I guess I wondered from uh, what the um, Board of Health role might be in, you know, making a declaration. If I read through and listened to that um, uh, webinar, it's not like writing a one, you know, three sentence thing. It's not just one sentence. It really covers a number of areas about definitions and uh, actions and plans and you know so it's not it's not a trivial task um but i do think well like ben said if we got that started at least a framework for that then to pass you know send it up to um the town council that might be a way to go um you know and some i'm thinking about some of the some of this the comments from uh Kamara Jones about things we can address is like, who is at the table uh, in Amherst in terms of these discussions? Um, also the ideas that we've been talking about of an assessment of what the public health needs are in Amherst is another essential step to take. Um, I don't wanna get stuck in that, um, that at that step. And I know some of the grants that Emma's been pursuing it is, are some of those depths that we want to want to support and take. So I think there's a lot for us to do and think about, but I don't know, do we have it? <laughs> Can we do it? Um. Yes, um, I, I don't know if if the attendees are aware. Uh, we we wrote a proposal to do a comprehensive a community health assessment and we're partnering with the School of Public Health, we have to get funding. So it would really look like part of the um, community assessment that was done uh, for the black community, but for our whole community and looking at data um, based on the social determinants of health, the assessment tool is built on that, looking at our different census tracts and small geographic um, areas so that we can get um, better data um, uh, and, and looking at that. So we need to procure um, funding um, for this and that's what we will be working on and the School of Public Health will be partnering with us and it will be starting in the, in the fall. Um, and I would love Ben Harrington to have your group in on this. We're gonna to put together a, a team so that as we work on it, um, and then what do we do with the data to move forward um, would be very helpful. And is, is Lauren, um, reconnected to talk i don't see her anymore oh. i uh, i can bring her back in the room hold on yeah, I'm here. Yep. Oh, okay <laughs> thank you have you been able to hear <laughs> us lauren yeah some some parts i don't i yeah my i don't know if it's i'm close to a window i don't know what what it is but you you're not static anymore so it's fine did you have a question or you wanted me to just add something at this time. If you can add anything. Okay. Um, yeah, I would just say um, that when it comes to the declaration of racism as a public health crisis, although every, you, you mentioned the, the assessment that you want to do for, I guess, the entire population or the town of Amherst. Um, but I, I think it's important and my perspective is to really continue with focusing on the parts of the community that are most affected um, by racism. And so I guess, you know, in the, in the, the presentation by the American Health, the American Public Health Association, um, they spoke about the duality of racism, and you know she gave uh, Kamar Jones 
gave the example of the, the sign in the, in the restaurant door. And if you're only on one side, you don't realize that there's another, there's another message on the other side. Mm -hmm. So that's saying the opposite. And so I, I don't know that if that webinar, if everyone on the Department of Public Health has seen it, um, and you mentioned that there's um, a summary that we can look into that has already been researched and presented to you, but I would, I would like to continue the conversations um, and like a campaign to, you know, let the town know and the other entities in the town know that, you know, this is something that we want to do. And um, one of the questions that um, Dr. Kamara Jones wanted us to ask, wh whatever organization we are in, is how is racism operating in this space? And so I, I just think that, you know, it would be good to go back to that webinar and um, maybe, you know, bring out some points that we can, can add to a campaign and um, share with, you know, the important parts of the town that we think would be important to like support this declaration and, and the planning that goes you know, along with that. Um, so that's pretty much what I have to say. I have a question for you, Lauren. When you say the, uh, the people that are most um, affected by racism in town, um, how would you describe, are, are these geographic locations? Are, are these special groups? How, how can we identify people that are most affected? Hmm. Um, how, how do you identify people that are most affected? Um, I think we're, we're affected in different ways because um, the conversations I've been having is that, you know, um, those who are white, those who are non-white, we're affected in different ways. And when I first came to the, the meeting of the Human Rights Commission, the life expectancy of an American has gone down. So it's, it's yes, it's worse for people of color, African-Americans, minorities, um, people who, you know, however you want to, to Subjugate, subjugate those different areas of people of color. But the American lifestyle is, is just very stressful and the public health institutions, um, as was mentioned in the webinar, do not support necessarily health. They, they're not where health is, is um, necessarily you know, sustained, even though like when we get sick um, or we give birth or we have an injury, yes, we go to the doctor. And I was thinking in my mind, like, you know, no matter how much I love my child, I cannot, you know, give her a root canal. I can't do dentist work on her, but I can make sure she goes to the dentist. I can do my best to make sure she brushes her teeth, which is always an issue in our household, <laughs> which, you know, is another story. But anyway, um, we need public institution. We need health services, but still that is not where health lies. And I think that's how uh, Dr. Jones put it. That's not where health lies. So we need all these other community and collaborative efforts to like support our health and and as I say counter racism and 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 like strengthen you know ourselves and those communities that are most impacted and your question like how do you identify that well 
um, this is kind of, these terms are kind of new to me. So I'm not, I'm not a professional like activist or person who, you know, knows all these terms off the top of my head, but um, race, they said that race, you have to say the full word racism. It's not the issue of race and how, you know, America loves to separate people of how they look and where they come from, but it's actual racism. And so you have to say the full word and you have to um, also remember that, um, I just lost my thought, but uh, you have to, you have to say the full word racism and racism is invisible in many times. And, and I thought that was a very, really important point that even though we might not see it operating or can't put our finger on it all the time, it's always there because it's part of the fabric of the American society. So I think it, it affects all of us, but it affects us in different ways. And when we go back to like it as a health crisis, I don't, I don't necessarily want to have access to a, a defunct health system. Like, I don't feel like me going to the, the doctor multiple times or getting operations or having access to a unhealthy health system is what is going to better me. But I think we all, we all know when we, we feel good you know, and, and we all know when we need something and we're not getting it. And so I, I guess that's a, a roundabout way of answering your question, <laughs> but, but it definitely, okay. it definitely affects all of us. And it definitely affects um, people of color. So it, it so, depends on how you want to define okay. that. Sorry. If I, so uh, let, let me see if I got these two, I, I put it as three messages from you. One is you don't want to use the medical model. You want to use the public health model. Um, and that um, I have a question for you. Are you familiar with the community safety working group report? Um, yes, I have. I haven't read it, but I am continuing conversations with the okay the representative of the group, Brianna and Alicia. And so I, I think, as I said before, it's, it takes the different silos and takes the different okay. um, groups that we're connected with that are working on this, these issues, these community issues to support each other. So yes, I am familiar okay. with the report. And so that and that the importance of, of collaboration and cooperation uh, between and among um, different leaders and groups in town. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did other, what other, what did other board members get from what Lauren is trying to say? I'm, tr I'm trying to, um, uh, uh, my problem is, I keep hearing and talking about racism, but I want to start putting action steps in place um, uh, versus talking about it. I heard Lauren say at the beginning that she, you know, taking from Kamara Jones that she wanted to get to the why and then take these action steps, which in, I thought I heard things like, some of the whys are like the digital divide, access to healthcare, public education and anti-racism curriculum. There's something I missed, I think, group, some kind of group, I didn't get that. A community police oversight, attention to public safety, black spaces and entrepreneurship. So I mean, it seemed like a whole bunch of, uh, not bunch, but a, a really broad um, look at, at how, things work for people in the town in the town um, i i don't have the community safety working group report in front of me but the the community safety working group has touched on many of those exact pieces so 
I guess. And their recommendations to town, to the town council um, touches on those. Has anyone else read the community safety working group report? Not recently enough to remember. <laughs> I know they have like seven recommendations, but I think this is a little different. Mm -hmm. The declaration for naming racism as a public health crisis is not in their report, but it, but it is some of the, some of the aspects of, or the effects of racism, like over policing, um, like, uh, I guess the main one was over policing because that's what they were charged to, to look at. Mm -hmm. um, and I might be over speaking because I, I haven't read the whole thing, but um, their, their charge was to see how they can come up with recommendations to the standard policing of the Amherst um, Police Department, how communities of color who don't feel safe how they can make those communities feel safer and what recommendations will the town support with finances, with money, with funds. And with the whole conversation with defunding the police or transferring funds to these other areas of the community that will support a more safer community, um, was the oversight of the police, you know, a continual oversight, community oversight of the police. And um, again, like some of the things were like projects like the youth center or the cultural center, which was, I mean, it's not clear as are they going to use a building that's already, you know, existing or are they going to you know, create a, a, is the town going to designate a, a space? Um, like, how, how is that going to work? Is that going to be two years from now, three years from now? But I think from my standpoint, we need to continue to have the conversations in any way that we, we feel is necessary to have the conversations about racism and, um, you know, continue to like ask the question, like, how is it operating in the town? And racism operates in more than one way. So there has to be more than one way to address it. Board members, Tim? Well, um, I, I agree this, this is a very important aspect of public health. Um, I think your question about having meaningful ways to accomplish it rather than talking, that is where the challenge is. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the mission of the Board of Health in terms of developing new regulations, altering the regulations, um, and I think it's listed like a three important task of the Board of Health. I'm just curious how we could actually help in through those three mechanisms to enhance this. Of course, the declaration will be really helpful as a first start, but uh, we need to start talking about very specific ways we could deal with this issue. So, in terms of operations for a department, um, the AMA gives some good uh, systems with how they've implemented um, and actual practices when it's been declared an emergency, um, a crisis. And also the APHA, I don't have their 85 page playbook, but, um, the, but they also have a pretty comprehensive um, how to make successful outcomes and actions uh, following these declarations. Uh, 
how do we as a board make it possible for the health department to kind of make some of these things happen? I feel like that that's sort of been a question that I've been on the board for two years. <laughs> that's been a kind of question I guess I, I haven't really asked. Yeah, so it looks like when um, official declarations that were posted by the APHA um, have been declared via town councils um, or city councils, uh, boards of selectmen. Um, so I think what Ben was speaking to earlier uh, with the Human Rights Commission, what Lauren has spoken about um, would be the Board of Health um, and the Human Rights Commission and possibly other groups um, making a, a statement to this town council um, requesting a, a formal declaration of racism as a public health crisis mm -hmm. um, by the town council. Um, and then yes, Maureen, you spoke to the very comprehensive um, declarations that have been published mm -hmm. uh, by cities and towns in, in Massachusetts, but then also around the um, United States. So official formal declarations that are that comprehensive are typically formulated and composed and published by the town councils or select mm -hmm. boards. Um, so I don't think that's something that has to be done here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, this is a great discussion, but and profitable. Um, and somehow, is there a way uh, ending before with ending this segment tonight that um, we have something tangible after this meeting um, to kind of bring to town council forward how significant of an issue um, even the discussions in this room have shown as Anita has shared um, with it with racism here in Amherst. Steve, before I say anything. Yeah, so, you know, I read, I did the webinars and everything and I agreed with essentially everything I saw there and that I read, I would personally completely support this. And if I was just asked, would you sign a declaration or approve it? I absolutely would. I, I have some of the reservations I think Tim was expressing about the, the Board of Health has a charge. There's certain things we're supposed to do and we have to have credibility in what we do. We have to be very sure, you know, we're gonna kick people out of their homes if it's unsafe. We're gonna close down restaurants. I really think everything needs to be very firmly based in information that we, that we have. And if, you know, when we go to the social determinants of health, you know, virtually everything is a health issue. I mean, you could say foreign policy, aspects of foreign policy, United States policy is a health issue because it could lead to nuclear war for heaven's sakes, or immigration is all kinds of things are that, but we should not be doing that. It's really not our job. So I think we want to really focus on the town of Amherst if possible. And by all means, a declaration. I think that dec the, what the declaration says is fine in general. I heard a couple of things there that I definitely think we should do, not do. And that is, if we as a board, we as individuals might support something like reparations, for example, it would be a big mistake for the Board of Health as a board to support that because it is a political issue. It is a controversial issue. There's not a direct enough link to our mission to do that will lose credibility with members of the public if we start taking positions on things that are not quite directly related to health. Racism is in general, and I would support the declaration, but that's the caution I have. Let's stay within demonstrably health issues and not take positions on things that will weaken the board's credibility on areas that we really do have expertise on and are and need to be need to be um, believed when we take a position. So I'm all for, I think, urging the town council to make that declaration is good. And I would definitely support that if it's a the kind of thing that I've heard, except for these very specific things that I think go beyond what we should be dealing with as a board. We may all agree with it, but if that's different from the board doing. Okay, I've jotted down four points. One is that we, and we can even do it today, that we support and we as a board say that racism is a public health issue. 
What's the uh, definition? Do we have Do we have a definition of racism? I really think that should be in front um, of us. I can I can hear it from the top yeah. hotel. Kamara it, it, Jones had a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. I like that one. Yeah, yes. I, I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Yes, I, I can get it up the APHA website that we put racism on our agenda every month that we that it doesn't slip behind everything that we recruit a uh, that the new term is BIPOC that our board reflects our town that um, and that we talk about under our um, it comes up the health department development and that we um, that we um, start talking about um, uh, bilingual, bicultural department meetings, having community health workers that uh, reflect the communities of need and that um, with our community assessment data that it's done in a partnership collaboratively and see what our data says our community needs. Uh, so those are, are, are my points um, that I, I would like to go forward with. And I think we draw off from some of those other reports that have just are very recent that. Um, yes, and that's what I say, collaborative, cooperative. Yeah. Yes. yes. Because we don't yes. have to recreate everything. No, no, that's what, that's what I mean by collaborative and, 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 um, and cooperative. Hello. Can I just um, add a suggestion that sure. before, because um, I, I, I really, I don't, I don't know the steps um, when, when you declare and a lot of, I, I won't say, it's just me, I guess me as a person of color, um, we don't, I, I don't get, I try not to get too involved with politics, but I think you know, these days it's like right in your your face all the time on the news and everywhere. So I'm I'm just saying that to say that um, me myself as a person of color, I don't necessarily know all the the steps in into making policy or making a change in a political way, um, which is something that you know has to be learned. You have to get involved it's not always something that is just like automatic um so when we say we're going to go to the town and declare racism as a public health crisis i think before that like um maureen was saying that there's planning and there's definitions and it would be nice to like have people of color and you know those in the community who are you know, if it's gonna just be the Department of Public Health and the Human Rights Commission, that's fine. But if we could, as myself, who is part of the initiation of this, like how, how will we be in the planning parts of like what the declaration will say? And then as you said, the action steps, like the campaign to share this with, you know, other, you know, organizations like, how will that all come about? Is it is that something that we could do together? What I was saying is that as the first step, we're, that we as a board identify it as a as a as uh, an issue, and using um, Dr. Kamara Jones's definition, racism is a is a system of structuring opportunity and assigning value based on the social interpretation of how one looks, which is what we call race, that unfairly disadvantages some individuals and communities, unfairly disadvantages other individuals and communities, and saps the strength of the whole society through the waste of human resources. And that's her definition of racism. Is that the definition that the other board members were referring to as the APHA definition? That's the one I recall. I, I mean, there are, I guess other, other declarations have different definitions. I didn't really get into the weeds 
on other towns or cities, but. Um, and we're not, we are not declaring it for the whole town. We are declaring it as the Board of Health saying that this is a public health issue. So we're not making the statement for the whole town. Okay. And that would be done by the town council. They would have to develop the whole declaration. Right. We are just recommending that they do that. <laughs> right, and we, and we are stating that racism is a public health public issue. Health is a public health issue in the town of Amherst using this definition. Is that what other members are so, willing to do? So we are recognizing this as a major issue, uh, but the most of the action is going to come from the town council. Is it right? Yeah. And, and, and uh, another one is, uh, um, if we are identifying this as a major issue, we also need to back it up with some data. This is my opinion. Uh, I think uh, Nancy's um, community survey, if that could be some sort of a tool to assess the importance of this, you know, more quantitatively and qualitatively, uh, sure. we'll be having a much more stronger one rather than a pure definition. That will help us with the local one, but the data um, is some of Kamara Jones's data and what um, Lauren was telling us earlier, and even under the COVID, that Black, Latino, and other people of color in the United States under COVID-19 were three times, I have three times the rate of death, disability, and severe cases and, of um, uh, from COVID. And Emma, were you able to get the data on um, the um, immunization rate of, of people of color in our town or people living in Section 8 housing? So we are able to extrapolate that micro amount of, an, of data. Um, it doesn't break it out like that. Uh, mm -hmm. As much as we tried to pull reports, um, I did reach out to Dr. Katie Brown, the lead state epidemiologist, and um, they're not able to help with that. Um, I don't know, do we need to do a little more homework before we come to making this statement to the board, to the town council? Like, I haven't looked in detail at the report for reparations, but apparently that that work brought up uh, disparities, health disparities in Amherst. I, I know they exist, you know, I know we know the disparities exist and, and Anita brought that up in terms of like um, maternal, uh, maternal deaths, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the natal, in the birth period. And, um, and other things that are, are na but she mentioned they're national, state, and local. And I don't, I'm sure they are, but if we wanted to kind of pull on the local, more local data, maybe that's there and could be a statement, some statements that would support the idea that this is not just a national problem, it is an Amherst problem. Um, and, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much we need to, put in a statement like this to um, bring it to the town council. I think that the, there is plenty of national data and even state level data. And one thing is uh, uh, if we have community level that is Amherst and also regional mm -hmm. Pioneer Valley itself, some metrics I think will we'll have a much more stronger case uh, when we make the recommendation. So maybe we can just talk about the points that we would need to address to make a recommendation um, that people feel comfortable with uh, at our next meeting. And we can kind of each draft or pull some things together and maybe get together, maybe kind of put it together 
at our next meeting or even circulate some of these things, just put them out there. I don't know. Just trying to move it along, you know, trying to make it good, but also trying to move it along at the same time because it gets, it can get drawn out. Do we all want to work with Kamara Jones's definition in our declaration that the Board of Health is declaring that racism is a public health issue? I'm good with that. Then do we all want to look at what we think would be important in this declaration for the Board of Health? We're not saying this is a town declaration, but that the board makes this declaration that we submit it to each other for discussion at our next board meeting to make this declaration. Do people feel that is a, a, a good step to take? Well, let's not call it we do a declaration. Okay, we're trying to get information and arguments to present to the town so that they will make this declaration okay. on behalf so that of that we then identify yes. so that the board identifies racism as a public health issue. Yeah. Okay, and so we'll you use the word identify. Fine, okay. Yeah. And we were we're looking for specific points as as targeted and regional and local as possible, given that it is a declaration from the town of Amherst that should it pertain to the town of Amherst as much as possible. We're part of the whole country, but it so would be more convincing. Our step after we write our own identification of racism as a public health issue is then asking and forwarding this to the town council for their action. So our action, and then how we can ground it into our mission of assessment, health promotion, and um, 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 it begins with A and I'm blanking it right now. Access. <laughs> um, Actions. <laughs> no, it's not access. It's, um, oh, goodness, I, I just can't get it right now on the spot. I would get it in a minute. Um, but looking at, at the health department mission. Um, are, do we feel comfortable doing that? Yes. Uh, I, I think uh, this is what I would propose. Uh, for next meeting, we should come up with some sort of a key areas uh, which we think has a strong connection between racism and public health. Uh, and then within those three are key areas, we should identify some metrics uh, for Amherst from regional community level. And that will give us a very strong case for when we move to the next level of making that recommendation. So, so our action step, shall I make the motion? And then people can, and we can then discuss it. The motion is that the Board of Health will identify racism as a public health issue. And we will um, all work on our points to support this so that at our next meeting, we can move forward um, on making this our public statement. Even if we all, I think we'll all agree with it. Why do we need a motion? Let's just do it. If you want to make a motion, we're going to have to spell it out very, okay. very carefully. I so make a motion that the Board of Health identifies racism as a public health issue using Kamara Jones's APHA definition and that we work on our supportive statements and metrics for our next meeting so that we can vote on it. In other words, 10 days before our next meeting, presumably, or five, a week before. Mm -hmm. that, that we send it out 10 days. We share, we share them. We, we share, share them. We <laughs> share them 10 days before our next meeting so we can discuss it at our next meeting to move forward. Sounds like a plan. And the sharing can only 
be informative. It can't be any deliberation. Right, right. right. It's being just compliant. set out for okay. people. There's no to discussion. Through. There's no discussion. You, you, we use this as a working document to start our work at the next Board of Health meeting. Thank you. We're just doing our research and sharing our research without discussion. So do you want to read the motion back? <clears throat> okay, the Board of Health will identify racism as a public health issue using Dr. Kamara Jones's American uh, Public Health Association definition. And we will work on supportive, a supportive statement and metrics for our next meeting to be shared by no, no less than 10 days before the next meeting. Is that it? So that is the motion. Okay. I need any discussion on the motion? Well, you did a second or first, well, and I'll second, second it. it first. I'll but, second okay, it. You second it. I'll get this back. A any discussion on the motion? Okay, hearing no discussion, let's vote. All in um, favor of the motion. Maureen. Aye. Tim. Aye. Steve. Aye. Nancy. Aye. Okay. Now I have uh, another motion. And that is that as we move forward, racism is an agenda item on our monthly agendas. You, you, may, you make up the agenda, just put it on. It's fine. Okay. You don't need to have a motion. Now I have, this isn't a motion, but um, Lauren, are you still there? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. We, okay. Yeah, Lauren, Lauren, I just brought her back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we need a board of health member. That is, uh, I, I don't know how to politically correctly say this, a BIPOC <laughs> member. I, I don't know if that's the right term to use now, but that's the one that's going around in all the literature and in town. And would you even consider being a board of health member? Yes, yes, I am considering and have considered, and um, I still have to fill out that form. So, okay. Yeah. So if you I'm still sure. consider, fill out that form. If you know anyone else, please suggest them to them to fill it out. And I know uh, Marcy Sklo posted my letter request on the Racial Equity Facebook page for town. So I, I don't know how else to get this request out. Marcy Slo? Marcy Sklo. She oh, posted oh. it on the um, uh, racial equity Facebook page for town. Okay. But if you know I, of any I, other way to get the message out, spread the word. Spread the word. I, yes, I will spread the word to the CSWG. I think we're going to keep that, that organization alive despite <laughs> Now, is, is Ben yeah. Harrington still on? No, he's not on, but if he or okay. anyone else who is attending and hearing, please, please, please get this message out. I certainly will. And, and this will let me know if you need me to stay on or, I mean, are we finished with this? Um, section of the meeting? Um, we are, but it might be coming up again because I'm going to bring it up under the department development. But if you'd like oh. to stay on, if you're considering to be on the board and want to see how we are doing things. Okay, um, sure. Remotely, you can. Um, okay. Does anyone else have any other comments before we move on? No. Okay. And thank you, Lauren, for coming and bringing this forward. So She's that we still can here. I just in action. Okay. She's still here. I just moved her to an attendee. Okay. I apologize. But she could hear me as an attendee. Okay. And thank you, board members. Um, so now we are going to talk about the Pioneer Valley Tobacco Control Inspection Outcomes and follow up. 
So we had four and I forwarded to all the board members, the letters of the four non-compliant um, businesses in town with selling to underage um, buyers, tobacco yeah. products, tobacco yep. nicotine products. Yep, so the four um, establishments were Amherst Wine and Spirits, Cumberland Farms, Russell's Liquor Store and Spirit House. Um, and it was a, it's a mix of all four with a combination of not asking for ID for the youth um, and not asking the ages. Um, with that being said, uh, Stephen McCarthy, who works in the licensing department, um, each one of the establishments, when he sent out the letters with Susan Malone, the inspector, um, with their subsequent fines based off of the new uh, regulations, um, did also send their uh, acknowledgement at the beginning of the year when they got their new license for the year um, with compliance with the tobacco sale laws. And then on Wednesday, um, Unfortunately, I'm not sure why, but Stephen was unable to previously send out the tobacco quiz uh, to these establishments, but that has subsequently been done. Um, we, I even got an email today um, just inquiring if those had to be returned to town hall and the licensing department or if they were for an internal record. So um, I did respond to that one establishment today and um, it was nice to at least see that they're taking it seriously and um, that they were reaching back out. Board members, do you have any comments before I? <clears throat> Emma, was they, were those uh, violations found by their, uh, the, the method of sending a person in to try to buy or was it based on reports? Yeah, it was on the, some, someone being sent in trying to buy mm -hmm. um, under the work of the Pioneer Valley Tobacco Commission. Very good, yeah. Mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. and those documents that we saw, you know, that were copied to us, those were, were those initial checkoffs that they'd gotten this or was that something they did after the fact? I, I wasn't quite sure what those documents represented that were sent by Stephen or somehow we got today or yesterday. Uh, yeah, so I- They're all check boxes about how all the new all the laws should work or the regulation. Yep, so that's when um, an establishment redoes their license request mm -hmm. for the year that they check off those boxes acknowledging mm -hmm. that they're going to commit to those standards. Okay. So Stephen just wanted to share them. Jim, do you have any comments? So uh, one question is, what do we do about it? You know, the violations. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. Uh, uh, is there any, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking of how, how strict those rules should be uh, on what we should be doing and um, should we send a letter or I'm just curious, you know, what are the, what are the follow-ups, follow-ups related to that? Yep. So the um, regulations were updated. Um, I, were they last year? Uh, with they the went into effect January 1st. Yep. So, um, the first violation is a thousand dollars, Tim. Um, the second violation within a 36 month period um, from the first violation is a fine of $2,000 and a blank day suspension that we as a, uh, that you as a board of health would come to decide what would be reasonable. And then a third violation within a 36 month month period of time from the first violation or additional violations during that time period are a fine of $5,000 and also a possible several day suspension. And then um, they're offered to have a hearing, um, but they would have to communicate with us if they would want that hearing and their uh, fines are due within 21 days of receipt. I have a couple of concerns. We wrote these regulations and we put this quiz in to try and help establishments not to get these fines. And I asked in 
February how these quizzes were going out and we never got an answer. And, and uh, we have to do the fines. I've never seen four done in one compliance check swing, not in the 15 years I've been on and off the board. Never have we had four at one time. And my concern is we tried to put this in to prevent this from happening. So the tool that we put in to help prevent was just mailed out on the 7th of July. That's seven months after our, our regulations went into effect. On the other hand, the regulations that were violated are not new. It's all an age-related thing. I mean, it no. doesn't seem like it is a subtle, a subtle change in the regulations that caught people. I mean, this no. is this has been this way for a long time. Um, you know, I I agree. It's sort of disappointing that those didn't go out sooner. But I don't know that that's really what the issue is with this these violations it just seems laziness or something about not instructing people and and making sure you know supervisors making sure that their employees are following the rules but so have have Maureen have you been here are, are anyone go, is anyone going to appeal this do you know um Emma we have not gotten any notification about appealing have any of you been on these appeal hearings before? No. Okay, because you know what? They're all going to say, oh, we were short staffed, someone knew, blah, 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 which is are no excuses. Um, but I hope that we can from now move forward with these quizzes because the purpose of the quizzes was to make sure everybody knew mm -hmm. what was done because when the owners check them off, it doesn't mean that the employees, and, that, and that's what they say. Well, they didn't know. Can you have they? We were short staffed. My brother was filling in. I, I, this is this is what happens at all these hearings. So, um, yeah. How can we move forward to make sure the the purpose is not to keep finding people. The purpose is not to be selling this. And how do we get the handlers who are selling it besides the owners educated? Um, that's my own. Yeah, I, I mean, the quiz was distributed to each one of the agencies uh, by Stephen McCarthy yesterday. Yeah, so uh, so on July 7th, it went out to everybody, not yeah. before then. So I was notified that it went out on July 7th. Okay. There were numerous requests over the last several months about it going out. Yeah, so. starting in our February meeting. And it isn't one of the boxes that's on that no. checklist. No. And I wonder if that should be part of that checklist that, that well, each new employee needs to be, have, you know, read these regulations and take this quiz or something, or each person is going to be selling tobacco at the establishment. You know, to emphasize that part a little bit, although I don't know how quick how I don't know how much forms do to make change, but maybe if it's there would highlight it. And and we did talk to Steve in February. So my concern is from February to July, no action, and, and you are all agents of the board, um, that no action had been taken to get those quizzes out. I, I know COVID came. And, and we had a big effort on COVID, but as agents of the, the health department, I was just concerned that, uh, that these didn't go out until um, July 7th when we brought it up in February, let's get these out. So, so it's hard when, I mean, a task has been delegated to another department mm -hmm. that isn't within our department to have absolute control over. Um, and I guess I don't know what else to say other than that. How can we prevent this from happening going forward? So, um, Publicize the, the fact that four people have had to pay $1,000 to all the other 14 tobacco license holders. 
I think that'll make the news. I don't know. <laughs> If Scott Mersbach picks this up, maybe he can put a little thing out <laughs> for. It, just, it does seem really unusual. Which is very unusual, and it's a thousand dollars. It's up from the the small one, and if if you if you um, do it another time, you're going to lose the ability to sell for a couple of days. Um, so a couple of suggestions to add to that. I think, of course, the quiz will help to develop some baseline information but uh, uh, I think the uh, that if if um, if we can find a way for the establishments themselves to um, self-regulate their new employees say for example uh, if a, there's a new employee who has violated certain rules, they sold it to uh, minors. What do they do about it? You know, uh, will they penalize with some um, uh, pay cut? Or <laughs> I mean, these are something. Self regulation is a very effective mechanism. We can make some suggest suggestions uh, uh, to do that instead of you know. That's one way. Another one is uh, increasing the probability of uh, uh, finding any type of violation. Say, for example, if it's going to be once in three months, people usually incorporate those probabilities into their decision making. <laughs> Instead of that, you know, can we increase that probability of inspections to become random and more frequent? So these are some couple of ways, you know. Are there follow up um, challenges to this, or, or if if uh, if someone's found in violation, or is it just goes back into the routine? Uh, frequency of, of uh, challenging the, you know, sending in people to try to buy who might be underage? Is it? Um, I, I don't have that answer right off the top of my head. Let me see if I can look it up real quick in the Pine Valley yeah. Tobacco Commission Agreement. I'm not seeing direct specifications under the Piner Valley Tobacco okay. Commission. No, it's just a, I wondered what they, how they, what they did, but. Yeah, it, it doesn't say. So I don't have the answer. Yeah, that's no problem. Do does anyone have anything else on this topic, or do we feel like we could move on? I feel like we put on, and I put you on the hot spot. But as long as we can get these quizzes out, we'll see if anyone is going to um, file an appeal. And um, let's just move forward. Um, and if you can just report next month on how these quizzes are going mm -hmm. um, and how they're being checked on. Um, okay. Okay, next, back on the hot spot. <laughs> Uh, Emma, health department development. Um, so here we are. So we applied for those two grants. Um, we're still waiting to hear if we're able to get them. They would certainly help us expand our department and improve diversity and inclusion. Um, but currently we don't have that 
capacity. Uh, we hired um, Debbie Fish as the per diem temporary nurse to help complement Jennifer Brown's hours. Um, but I am sad to report that Jennifer Brown uh, is it, it's good news for her. She's taking up another opportunity um, and going back to school to finish her PhD. Um, but her last day with the town of Amherst will be uh, July 16th. Um, her position has been posted um, and shared um, with Mass Public Health Nurses, MHOA, MAHB um, for posting. Um, the position that, that Debbie Fish took, uh, I, I mean, was posted April 16th. Um, and so it's um, a challenge for public health hiring right now. Through, it's a crisis throughout. So, so Emma, can you share with the board before I go on my little tyrant now, how much the town is going to pay a public health nurse in Amherst? Um, the position is posted as a great, uh, a level three salary for non-union staff, which starts at, I believe, twenty-seven forty-one an hour. Okay. Now, can I go on my tyrant? I, I, I don't know what anybody else feels. Number one, do you know that school nurses in Amherst start at $43 an hour plus steps? That the um, Wilbraham just recently advertised for an LPN, that's a licensed practical nurse for their public health department at $40 an hour. Do you know that nurses, new graduates start at anywhere from 45 to $65 an hour? Do you know that a PVTA bus driver that's a student at UMass gets starts at 1750 an hour? I think this is a huge insult to nursing and the health department and that the Board of Health can't move forward. I mean that the, the town can't move forward and pay a public health nurse what a public nurse health nurse should be get, receiving. We're asking for someone with public health specialty. That's advanced learning. 20, what did you say? 28 something? 20, 27. 27 something. That's absolutely fill in the blank. Um, I, I have moved forward with um, requesting that the that HR, um, and I, I forget if it's the personnel board or, or the committee that um, works on the salary scales review that. Um, that request has been put in several times and uh, at this time it, it will not be shifting. Well, they should at least put it comparable because the school nurses used to be in the health department in the eighties and into the early nineties. And then if you, I, I'm just gonna quote Andy Steinberg. I don't know what the, the, the salary for anyone coming in under the grant, but when I sent a letter to Andy Steinberg about financing, stuff for the health department, well, I sent it to the town council as not as a board of health member, as a community member. Andy Steinberg wrote back to me that uh, when I was asking using the monies that we were getting from the vaccine reimbursement to go back to the health department, his comment was, well, if it, he doesn't believe in funding anything with grants or just one-time finances. So my concern is that we get the grant and you get things, what happens when the grant goes away? Does the health department disappear? I mean, everything that is in the health department again. So that's my tirade and I'll, I'll end now, but I, I as, as a nurse, I'm insulted and as a town, I'm insulted that that's all the town will come up with to pay a nurse for the health department especially everything that nurses and all the nurses that volunteered this past seven months. It's an insult to all of us. Amen. Makes it hard to recruit. Yes, it does. Um, so that's really all I have for health department development right now.
Um, COVID-19 update. So we have, um, we officially did finished. I think I spoke to this, our last meeting. Um, oh, actually, no, our last clinic here was um, the 28th. Mm -hmm. um, can't believe it. Uh, what a whirlwind of six months since our first clinic was January 11th. Um, we've done total with the mobile program two over 13,000 vaccines. Um, we have had over 200 volunteers help us. Um, we did uh, 500 vaccines for mobile regional homebound in 14 communities. We helped um, support and, uh, and helped guide uh, school clinics in five municipalities and seven schools, vaccinating over 200, 300, um, I think it was over 300 kids. Um, just really phenomenal work for our, our small department here. Um, in terms of COVID-19, we've had several, and rates, we've had several weeks of no cases. Um, some that appear to come through as probable or antigen tests, but are also, I guess the antibody tests are, are classified in the same probable category. So those are hard to follow. We have to look into those and then acknowledge that they're antibody, not antigen, not the active virus. Um, and that's it for cases. Um, and we continue to collaborate and communicate with the university and Hampshire College and Amherst um, with preparing for the fall. In terms of vaccine rates, um, uh, I was communicating with uh, state epidemiology today to try and see if we could drill down our data a little bit better um, and have a clearer understanding. Um, they don't have the capacity as well on the state level to help us um, improve the, the efficacy of our understanding our data as a town because um, our numbers are based off of census reporting, um, which includes students, uh, even with the block um, populations and whatever residents students or, or individuals are reporting as for when they get vaccinated is the address that it's being listed under for statistics. Um, Amherst has the highest population in the entire state um, of 20 to 29 year olds, making up 43% of our population. And again, the highest population of 16 to 19 year olds, making up 21% of our population. Um, so we, we do feel like those are skewing our numbers, um, which does appear that we have the 42% of individuals with one vaccine. And I believe it was yesterday, it was 36% of the overall community being fully vaccinated, having two vaccines or being fully vaccinated. Um, we continue to, to work with, uh, the community agencies. I know Nancy, um, we've had a big email going back and forth with a lot of great com active community partners that are passionate about equity and, and getting it out there. Um, so we have an additional um, new clinic that we have a flyer in multiple languages um, that we're going to have a, another clinic on July, Saturday, July 24th at the East Hadley bike station. Um, from 10 a.m. to 12. And then Cooley Dickinson is also gonna be there with um, some of their team that speak multiple languages. So, and it'll also be where, when Mobile Markets is there. Um, I've also reached out to the housing uh, management in that area um, around the East Hadley Bike Station to get the word out about that clinic as well. Yeah, so I, I, opened, I opened a box. Uh, last week, I met with Emma uh, 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 getting ready for the board meeting, and she had reported to me that at the last mobile clinics, there was um, at uh, Olympia Oaks, there was one vaccine at the East Street one, Butternut uh, Farms one, and East Hadley Bike Station four, 
when the um, bus came through, there were six at Colonial Village and six at South Point. And I was concerned and Emma said that at, uh, for whatever reason, they weren't able to um, advertise for the clinic. And at Juneteenth, I talked to Isolde Bustamante, and then I saw her again at the reading of Fed Frederick Douglass, and she had said she would provide translators. So I sent her an email yesterday morning. I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday morning, um, asking her for some help. Well, it, it just went all over Hampshire County, and I have um i don't know 28 responses you've gotten them all emma and there's a really nice uh, this one just came out from mindy dome that there is going to be this nice um flyer in english spanish and chinese and it's going out and the library just said and i, I don't know are you going to follow up on some of this emma the that's, library that's, said that's our published things and uh, so hopefully we'll get a, a that's our flyer thing. we that's made that flyer, flyer. <laughs> yeah. um okay so finally we're getting a flyer there were no flyers at the, for the last no, one no there there were flyers nancy oh okay you had said you didn't advertise so so there's some challenges with some of the mobile markets um not in terms of mobile markets but with the barriers with it being on private property. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I misunderstood yeah. uh, what you said then. <laughs> okay. And and not wanting the ones on private property to be publicized outside of their residential complex. I, see. I think because of liability. Okay. Yeah. And so will these then go to the um, uh, uh, apartment managers to post around mailboxes and get them out that way or yeah, even door they, to door they've they've already gone out great 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 so i will be there at that clinic mark will be there he is by he's not bilingual he speaks spanish what else can we do this is sort of the trial or or, or a way to see if we can increase vaccinations in our more needy neighborhoods um, where there are possibly lower vaccination rates, but we don't have the data to say there is a lower vaccination rate there. Yeah, I've also, I've reached out to Hilltown Community Health Center to see if any of their um, community health workers can assist. I also reached out to CHD to Family Outreach to Francine. Um, with that being said, they only have two caseworkers, including Francine, um, that that serve Amherst and all of the surrounding communities. So they don't have the capacity to help. Um, but well, Dickinson is sending translators. So they're sending translators, but in terms of getting the word out okay. before the event. And I, we, we have volunteers that are bilingual that we've been engaging for these as well. Okay, okay. so um, that's gonna put me back to um, health department development can we write in a community um, health worker that's bilingual, bi bicultural, 20 hours a week in our department? So there's using no CARES money, using federal and state money. I know the budget's gone through, but that this money's coming through. So CARES- Get it for a year. Well, CARES money is ending December 31st okay. of this year. Um, I did have a discussion with Paul about that. Um, I mean, uh, it's always worth a try. That's part of our public health excellence grant that we also um, are trying to put forward. Well, I want something permanent, not this excellence grant. We brought in money. Can't we get this in here? <laughs> our, our, our budget has not been approved for that. Okay. Well, we can keep asking. All I can say is no. <laughs> Emma, has there been issues with um, people not getting their second dose or have you had to try to follow up on people? Yeah, so I mean, our, our data is pretty in line with what's experienced throughout the state. Um, 
with some individuals not getting their second dose, it's also challenging to really know the accuracy of what's being reported because if they get vaccinated out of state, oh, yeah. it's not going to be state. reported in yeah. MIIS um, or even out of the country. Uh, we've had individuals that are coming in for, um, you know, from Colombia and had their first vaccine in Colombia. So they're getting yeah. their second Pfizer, but it'll show up as a More. partial vaccine. Yeah. So overall, I think our um, it was over 80% the last time I looked at it, but I, I haven't looked at it in yeah. the last day or two. Pretty good. You're right. It's complicated, especially here, you know, with all the movement. Yeah. Right before college was leaving um, and we were starting to get all those students and it was opening up. Um, that was some of their concern is how are we going to follow up with second doses when they're not going to be here. Right. I remember at Mount Holyoke, they were given the second dose on the day that students had to be out of the dorm. <laughs> um, and i got to wonder. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure the same was true around the valley. Emma, do you have anything else? I don't think so. I just, I appreciate everyone's support for the health department and all of the stuff that we're getting done and acknowledgement of all the work that we still have to do that we're all going to be able to do together you know i know i put you on the hot spot but there are just a couple things that any way we can move it forward and if it gets in a public meeting maybe some other public people will spur um for our needs um um i don't have any other topics and not anticipated by the chair. Anybody else have anything else they wanna say for the good of the health, Board of Health and the health department? Regular meeting as usual in, in August, right? For we've already said yeah. the next meeting, but that's next, that's the, August. The second Thursday, which is, yeah. uh, look it up. It looks yeah, like, like the 12th. 12th. The 12th, yes, I have it down, Board of Health. It's also but, a meteor shower that night. And it's my grandmother's birthday if she were still alive. <laughs> um, so thank you everyone um, for everything that you've been doing. And um, we need a motion to adjourn. I'll move we adjourn. I second. second OK, all in favor? Maureen. Aye. OK, Steve. Aye. Yes. <laughs> Nancy, aye. And thank you, Emma. And um, I'll be there at the 24th. Please let me know if you think I need to do anything earlier to help. I'll, I, I'm coming home for that um, weekend and I can come home Thursday, Friday, um, whatever way I can help for that clinic, getting the word out, um, just let me know and I'll plan coming home and I'll stay for a few days afterwards um, too. Uh, uh, and Mark will be there. One quick question, uh, getting the word out, are there any giveaways for people, you know, incentives? <laughs> like uh, with giveaways? our Board of Health? No, I mean- With our budget, health department you know. funding? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, people, I mean, especially if you have a site in in a low income neighborhood or some something you're targeting, you know, some, some giveaways will help, you know, for people to come and take the vaccine. You know, the state has five one million dollar yeah. prizes, which yeah. we are all eligible for. Oh. My wife insisted that we register. Yeah. So I would say. Okay, so we, we said we were going to adjourn, but uh, uh, Emma, <laughs> can you contact the ambassadors because they had all those free things that they were giving out for kids at the Juneteenth thing, and maybe they can set something up that day. So get yep. in touch with the ambassadors, and maybe they can get some free things to give away. Yep, yep, they're planning on coming. Okay, so maybe we can get that out. There'll, there'll be things for kids to do and uh -huh. handouts. So um, get the ambassadors. They have more money to spend on this than we do. <laughs> okay, so do we have right. to adjourn again because we discussed? <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everybody. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.